While the world was distracted by the grinding trench warfare in Europe, a far more dangerous arms race reached its point of no return in the East. In Pyongyang, Kim Jong-un has just unveiled the Hwasong-19, a solid-fuel monster capable of turning any city in Japan into a sea of fire in less than 15 minutes. With over 2,000 missiles pointed directly at Tokyo, the narrative was simple. Japan was a sitting duck. But behind the closed doors of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Japan's Acquisition Technology and Logistics Agency, a different reality was being built a $100 billion reality. As we enter 2026, Japan is no longer just defending. They are deploying what military analysts call the Invisible Shield, a multi-layered architecture of high-powered microwaves, laser interceptors, and AI-driven ghost drones. Today, we're stripping away the propaganda to show you why North Korea's massive missile forest is about to become obsolete. This is the 2026 strategy, and it is the most expensive gamble in military history. To understand the shield, you first have to understand the sword. For decades, North Korea relied on liquid-fueled missiles. These were slow, clunky, and easy to spot via satellite because they took hours to fuel on the launch pad. But that era is over. Enter the Hwasong-18. This is a three-stage, solid-fuel, intercontinental ballistic missile. Because it uses solid propellant, it can be stored in hidden tunnels, driven out on a nine-axle mobile launcher, and fired within minutes. There is no warm-up time for Japanese satellites to detect. By the time the heat signature is picked up, the warhead is already screaming through the stratosphere at Mach 20. Before we move on, if you're interested in modern warfare topics, then please take a second to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. But it gets worse. North Korea is now testing MIRVS, Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicles. This means one single missile can carry three or four separate nuclear warheads, each capable of hitting a different Japanese city. When you multiply that by a stockpile estimated at over 2,000 tactical and strategic missiles, the math for traditional defense just doesn't work. You cannot build enough $2 million interceptor missiles to stop a $50,000 rocket swarm. Or can you? In late 2025, Japan's cabinet approved a record-breaking defense budget of over 9 trillion yen, part of a massive $275 billion five-year buildup. The goal? To turn the entire Japanese archipelago into an unsinkable fortress. But they aren't just buying more of the same, they're pivoting to asymmetric defense. Japan realizes that the interception ratio is a losing game. If North Korea fires 100 missiles and Japan intercepts 99, Tokyo still loses. To win, Japan is deploying the SHIELD system, a layered network of unmanned air, sea, and underwater drones designed to create a 360-degree perimeter. Under the 2026 strategy, Japan is moving away from the pacifist constraints of the past. They're integrating their defense directly into the U.S. Space Force's hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor layer. This allows Japan to see the whisper of a missile launch before the flames even leave the canister. But seeing the threat is only half the battle. How do you stop a missile that travels at 5 miles per second? This is where the technology becomes science fiction. Japan has officially joined the elite club of nations deploying directed energy weapons. First, let's talk about the 100 kilowatt laser. Developed by Kawasaki Heavy Industries, this system is currently undergoing sea trials on the JS Asuka. Unlike a traditional missile, a laser travels at the speed of light. There is no leading the target, no wield resistance, and most importantly, unlimited ammunition. As long as the ship has electricity, it can keep firing. For the cost of a few dollars worth of fuel, Japan can melt the guidance fins off a North Korean drone or a cruise missile. But the real game changer for 2026 is the high-power microwave weapon, HPM. If a laser is a sniper rifle, HPM is a shotgun, 
it emits a massive burst of electromagnetic energy that fries the silicon chips and circuit boards inside an incoming missile. It doesn't need to hit the missile, it just needs to be in the general vicinity. In a joint research project with the US signed in July 2024, Japan is miniaturizing these HPM units to be mounted on trucks and loyal wingman drones. Imagine a swarm of 50 North Korean suicide drones crossing the Sea of Japan. A single HPM pulse from a Japanese coastal battery could instantly turn all 50 of them into falling scrap metal. No explosions, no mid-air dogfights, just an invisible wave that shuts down the enemy's brain. The most terrifying weapon in Kim Jong-un's arsenal isn't a standard ballistic missile, it's the hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV. These weapons don't follow a predictable arc, they fly low, stay within the atmosphere, and maneuver at speeds exceeding Mach 5. To a traditional radar, they're a nightmare. To counter this, Japan and the US have fast-tracked the Glide Phase Interceptor, or GPI. This is a multi-billion dollar co-development project. While the US provides the overall architecture, Japan is responsible for the solid rocket motors and the high-thrust propulsion hardware. The GPI is designed to do something previously thought impossible. It intercepts the hypersonic threat while it is still in its glide phase, high in the atmosphere but before it makes its final unpredictable dive. By 2026, Japan's Aegis-equipped destroyers like the Maya and Haguro will be the most capable missile defense platforms on the planet. They carry the SM-3 Block 2A, a missile that doesn't use explosives. It is a kinetic kill vehicle, which means it slams into its target with the force of a freight train, vaporizing it on impact. With the GPI added to the mix, Japan will have a double lock on the sky that Pyongyang simply cannot pick. But as any strategist will tell you, the best defense is a good offense. Japan has realized that just sitting behind a shield isn't enough. You have to be able to take out the archer, not just the arrows. For the first time since World War II, Japan is deploying standoff missiles. The backbone of this counter-strike capability is the upgraded Type 12 surface-to-ship missile. By 2026, these will be deployed in mass. They have been redesigned with a stealthy airframe and a range extended to over a thousand kilometers. This puts every major North Korean launch site and parts of mainland China well within range of a Japanese mobile battery. But Japan is going even further. They are mass-producing the Hypervelocity Gliding Projectile, or HVGP. This is Japan's own version of hypersonic tech. It launches like a rocket, but glides at extreme speeds to hit targets with pinpoint accuracy. The strategy is clear. If North Korea prepares a launch, Japan's AI-driven shield will detect it, the Aegis destroyers will track it, and the Type 12 batteries will eliminate the launch site before the second wave can even be fueled. This isn't just defense, it's a total neutralization of North Korea's strategic leverage. The world of 2026 is a different place. The era where a few missiles could hold a superpower-adjacent nation like Japan hostage is over. Japan has spent $100 billion to prove a point. Precision always beats mass. North Korea may have 2,000 missiles, but Japan has the invisible shield. They have the lasers, the microwaves, the hypersonic interceptors, and the political will to use them. While the headlines focus on the nuclear threat from the North, the real story is the technological triumphs of the East. Japan hasn't just built a wall, they've built a future where the missile is becoming a weapon of the past. But what do you think? Is Japan's $100 billion strategy enough to stop a desperate regime? Or is the invisible shield just an expensive dream? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see our deep dive into China's reaction to Japan's 2026 buildup, click the video on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay ahead of the front cost of global conflict. We'll see you in the next one.